Hi, welcome to everyone's favourite segment, Mailbag, where I just opened my mail. So exciting. Um, this one's from Alexander Selma. It comes from Deutschland. Hi to all my German viewers. Uh, my third, no, sorry. Yeah, maybe second highest uh, uh, country. I think equal with uh, uh, the old dart. So at about 10% uh, viewership or thereabouts. US is about 20% uh, viewership and Germany is about 10, UK is about 10, Australia is about 8, um, something like that. Anyway, let's, that's not a very good way to open it. Anyway, let's see what he sent in. We have a note. Hello from Germany. He lives in Lake Chimsey in Bavaria. Why do all my Bavarian viewers? He sent in, well, I won't ruin it. Let's open it up. Ooh. Well packed, well done. It is ta -da, a tablet computer. Um, it's as Xenomed. It's a, a like a medical high tech solution, like a medical one. That screen looks really interesting. There's a pattern on that screen. Well, check it out. Wow, maybe a two minute teardown. Excellent. And what else have we got? Is something different? Yep, another two minute tear down. We got a, uh, a 500 watt, like a dodgy, probably one hung low brand uh, uh, power amp. Yeah, yep, yeah, I don't think, yeah, you can just, you can just tell it's like a one hung low brand. Definitely two minute tear down. Let's go. And here's the story behind the tablet computer and the power amplifier Alex has sent in. He got this one just, it's rated at, uh, rate at? At 500 watts RMS, maybe you can tell the correct rating for this piece of crap. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be 500 watts. Yeah, I think we're looking at the classic peak music power output, the PMPO. Let's take it apart. And of course, you know exactly what's going to be in this. It's just going to be a single uh, power amplifier IC. It's got the one screw in here. Let's take off the end caps and ta-da! Uh, no, there we go, slide it out that way, there we go, we've got one little uh, staggered pin uh, SIP uh, power amplifier package, we'll take a look at the chip in that, but yeah, what's that brand, it's a J Wenko vent, <laughs> it's got a vent on the top, yep, <coughs> it's gonna need it. And that's a TDA 7377. Yep, a dual channel 30 watt RMS power amplifier. 500 watts. <coughs> Peak music power output. Yeah, what are we in the back in the 80s? Bullshit detected. Take precautions. And here's this tablet computer that he got uh, from a company 10 kilometers away from him. They went bankrupt and he got tons of stuff for scrap metal prices. Um, it was uh, designed for hospitals to display all kinds of, uh, you know, stuff for doctors and patient information and stuff like that, perhaps. And as I said, it's got the rather strange looking pattern on the screen. Check that out. Is that something to do with the touch screen? Or really? Do we have serial number 11? But hold on to your hat, Alex says the internal battery is dead, but if we apply 15 volts to these terminals here, then we can actually get the puppy to power up. Let's try it. Here we go, let's give it a pearl, 15 volts. Wah, 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 wah. Hang on, there's a button on the back. I think I have to, he says on the side, but there's no button on the side. So, here we go. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Come on baby, you can do it. <laughs> Phoenix Award bias that's run it yet. Ah, oh, Windows XP. There you go. Look at that. Fancy pantsy. Wow. It's waiting until this thing boots. Could take a while. Uh, bloody XP. Give me Windows 3.11. Can we move the cursor? Yep. No worries. Look at that. Come on. Boot. Damn you. Micro capture. And... I don't understand a word of it, but there you go. Nope, oh, connect. Yep, it's connecting to something, some sort of custom job. Looks like they've built, you know, probably some sort of uh, R&D group or something have been uh, uh, commissioned by the hospital or whoever, some medical company to produce 
some sort of custom prototype, hence like the serial number, like 11. They probably only made like, you know, they had a contract to supply like 50 of these things or something perhaps. So, yeah, I got no whip guy. Don't even know what any of that says. I don't even know what I'm agreeing to. I got no idea. I got no idea. Sorry. <laughs> it's trying to connect, but obviously can't. So probably some wireless thing. You can play solitaire. Check it out. Don't worry about the patience. Jeez. So that grid on there is probably an early touch... Way. Early touch screen. It died. I was going to say, like, I can't get... Look, I can get I can get the move the seven. I can move the king. I cannot move the ten. There's like a whole column there that does not... The touch screen does not work on. See? So, yeah, something's up there. So that's probably what... The, it's one of these early capacitive... Touch screens, because, you know, it is not resistive, because just the slide, I don't even have to touch it. All right, let's open this puppy up and see what we've got. Oh, oh, what a dog's breakfast. Look at the hot snot. Next up, one from America. Uh, from Randolph Vance. Thank you very much, Randolph. He's from uh, Lexington, Kentucky. Excellent. I've heard of Lexington, Kentucky. I don't know where I've heard of it. Maybe we've had a mailbag. But interesting what's inside this one. Look, nice and flat like this. It's addressed to that crazy Aussie bloke. Fantastic. Um, I can don't need that. I can pull the tab off. Ta-da! Because this is going to, if I cut through this, it's going to have that horrible, crappy stuff in it, I'm sure. This is... Oh. It's only a half? Ugh. Yep. I just got attacked. There it is. Oh, 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 God, I hate that stuff. It's awful. We have a newspaper. Yes, kiddies. We used to read these things. In This is the uh, tabloid format, is it not? USA Today. Um, it's, <laughs> excellent. Whoa. Excellent. This is the one. Fantastic. Check out. Check it out. It's from the future, which is now the past. Marty McFly! Brilliant! So thank you very much, Randolph, for sending this in. This is fantastic. This is actually the USA uh, Today from um, the October 22nd, 2015. This is not the joke one from the... Like, this is not a uh, movie prop uh, reproduction. This is actually, well... Kind of, well, you know, it kind of is, but uh, they actually included it in the actual USA Today. It's the Hill Valley edition, and there he is, Marty McFly, youth jailed, <laughs> arrested for theft. Fantastic. Cholesterol may cure, maybe uh, cancer cure, and three injured when mum rehydrates pizza slices. <laughs> Fantastic. And Hollywood to remake a match made in space by George McFly. <laughs> Public more gullible than ever. Gotta read that one. Ships sunk by whales since 1979. <laughs> Fantastic. I thought it was pirates. Pirates are responsible for global warming, didn't you know? I can't believe they closed the Cafe 80s in Moscow. Unbelievable, because Russians were not nostalgic about 1980s USSR or Leonard Brezhnev. And it's practically impossible to show this whole tabloid thing on video here to get the damn thing in frame. But uh, yeah, here we go. Jaws 19. Brilliant. The best Jaws sequel of the year. Fantastic. And what do we got? Yeah, ad for uh, bloody USA Today. They're flogging their own crap. And the future is now the trilogy. Awesome. And Michael, bloody legend. And there you have it. That was just an extra they put on the front. This is the real USA Today from the 22nd. Who's President of the United States in 2015? Well, apparently it's a woman. And this is not a joke. Unfortunately, that could be a real story these days. <sighs> and next up, we've got one from none other than Buzz Aldrin. The Buzz. Awesome. Not personally, but anyway. Um, yeah, it's, I'm sure he's a fan of the EEV vlog, is he not? He loves mailbag. Let's check out what we've got. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Get your American ass to Mars. Look at that. Brilliant. Ah, oh, love it. Good on you, Buzz. 
Another one from the United States, Taris Kush with a ZH. Thank you very much, Taris from Sammamish in Washington. Oh, I haven't heard of Sammamish. I don't want my Sammamish viewers. That's probably not even how you pronounce that. Goodness. Anyway, um, lots of people complaining about how I uh, pronounced uh, Kirchhoff in my recent uh, Kirchhoff's Laws videos. That's, yes, that's actually how it's pronounced here in Australia, I believe. Uh, that's the most common pronunciation in the US as well, I, though I stand to be corrected, and a few people took me to task over it that that's not uh, the proper German pronunciation and all that. I know. Welcome to the world of, you know, uh, evolution of language and all that sort of jazz. Let's have a look what we've got. Aha! We have, look at this. That looks like, I've got a note, that to me, even though I'm not in that sort of thing, looks like one of those um, uh, fish finder thingamabobs for a boat. Cool. Aha, Taris, yes, he's from Seattle. And well, originally from, the, well, he's a Ukrainian guy. And yes, there he is. You might recognize where he is. Yes, that's the EV blog lab. Yes, he did visit uh, a couple of years back. Oops, sorry for not immediately recognizing your name, Terrace. Anyway, what we've got is marine navigation system. It receives the Lawrence Sea uh, signals as probably made in the mid 80s. Well, let's tear it down. So it did look like one of these, uh, you know, fish sonar thingies. It's kind of got that look, you know, like I don't know what any of this uh, crap means here. But yeah, looking on the back, I immediately uh, knew it wasn't because it's got an antenna there and uh, autopilot. <laughs> there we go. So it is a uh, nav system. Made in Japan. All the best stuff's made in Japan. And there you go. That's nice construction. I like that. Like we saw in the uh, Lauren receiver uh, last time, we've got uh, multiple, multiple uh, filters here and uh, stuff like that. So that's fairly typical. I love how they're using that bracket at the back as a heatsink for these two puppies. A couple of fuses in there and uh, not much going on under there. But uh, yeah, nice multi-board, well, two-board construction and a third one for the uh, LCD module. They wouldn't have manufactured that. That would just be an off-the-shelf one. So they'll just have some uh, classic 1980s vintage uh, processing down there. This would have been a hand-taped uh, layout. they got a genuine bodge wire on there. And the main pro digital processor board, that's got classic uh, auto route written all over it. And you can probably see the shine on that. That's our uh, conformal coat. They've actually masked off those two pins there, you can see. And uh, yeah, look at that. Looks like, you know, flux residue from uh, wave soldering, but uh, it's, yeah, they've conformally coated the back of that board for the marine environment. They haven't conformally coated the uh, top or the components though. So, you know, you're gonna go, well, you know, if you're gonna go, you're gonna do that and conformally coat, you may as well go the whole hog. And there it is, check it out. And we do have a date code. Look at that, uh, 1984, there we go, late 84, so it would have been manufactured in 85 or thereabouts. We've got our uh, 10 megahertz ref reference oscillator there. Uh, Japan Radio Corp. It's made in Japan. Marty McFly approved. So I'm not sure what that puppy is. That could be uh, some sort of custom uh, ASIC, perhaps. Interesting. So... But uh, anyway, we've got an old, very old school look, Oki 80C85. In fact, we've got dual. Why have we got dual processors in there? That's rather unusual. And uh, 8255 for the I.O. Wow, really old school stuff. Actually, I just noticed the whole thing's manufactured by Japan Radio Corp. I think we, didn't we see that uh, last time in the previous uh, mailbag teardown of the avionics stuff? So... There you go. Jeez, they're into everything. And they even did the display unit as well. Check it out, standard Hitachi uh, chipset. We've got... I... look... I don't... look... that looks like your regular membrane uh, panel, but... I... buggered if I can press these bloody keys. There's just... ah, there's just nothing there. Unbelievable. So thank you very much, Taurus. That was uh, excellent. And sorry, I do forget how to pronounce your name, but it was good to meet you back in the lab. Yeah, a couple of years ago, wasn't it? Jeez, time flies. Well, I got one from Deutschland. Yet again, it's from Chip Guy. <laughs> Jeez, your parents were rather nice, weren't they? Um, from Hanover in Germany. And 
open before batterizers arrive. Yes, the batterizers are supposed to be, what is it, the 23rd of November now? They're supposed to be delivered in November, but yeah, they're going to be a tad late. And uh, I'm sure there's going to be uh, no end of um, testing and done to it. Not, uh, well, it won't just be me, it'll be like everyone will be testing this thing. So I don't know what their game plan is. I mentioned this on the uh, on the forum thread. I don't know what their game plan is once they ship these things, because up until now they've been able to, you know, use the excuse, oh, you know, all these bloggers don't know Jack because we haven't actually tested it. You know, as if we have to test gravity and things like that. Yeah. Anyway, that we don't know squat because we haven't tested it. Well, once we get the real units, every man and his dog's going to test it. And, well, the game's going to be up. The real performance data's going to be out. And we're going to know. Anyway, here we go. <laughs> it's a bullshit button to go with my wah, 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 wah. fail button. Awesome! I'll stick my bullshit button up. Beauty. Wow, FIFA power batteries. Yeah, I wouldn't trust those as far as I can throw them. Jeez. <laughs> Bit crusty. Anyway, let's plug them in. That was bullshit. Here we go. Bullshit detected. Take precautions. It's got multiple voices. Bullshit level, DEFCON 5. <laughs> DEFCON 5, brilliant. Is it? Oh, come on now, that ain't even bullshit. That's horse shit. <laughs> this is great. How many, how many phrases does it have? This is brilliant. Warning, warning, bullshit alert. That was bullshit. I think we've looped. Love it. Another one from the US. This one's from Godfrey Leggett. Good on you, Godfrey. Let's uh, see what he sent in, shall we? He's from uh, Beaumont in Texas. Everything's bigger in Texas. Sorry, that's a stereotype, but <laughs> yeah. Let's have a look. All right. Oh, it's a note. We've got some real crumbly. It's very heavy too, by the way. We've got some real crumbly foam. So yeah, that's just, it's real crusty. So it's, geez, packed in here well. Well done. Looks like he's cut down the exact shapes required. But that means it's going to be super messy getting this thing out. Geez, that thing's crusty. What the hell is it? Multicoder. What's international data systems? What's a multicoder? Two minute teardown. So Godfrey from Southeast Texas, and he didn't know I uh, did this <laughs> for my full-time job. Yes, unbelievable, isn't it? Like, yeah, I do this for a living. I open mail. Unbelievable. Let's check out what is in this multi-coder. Hmm. Got some big ass D connectors on here, and uh, that's about it. Hmm. So all we know is that it's a military surplus, and yep, check out the conformal coding. Look at that. Oh yeah, that whole board is dipped. Yep, this is uh, military, all right. Wow, and look, the connector, all potted as well. Look, completely potted. They would have hand wired those and potted it. <laughs> Tiny, thin. Bloody wires on there, what gauge are those? Absolutely tiny, wow. And there's the other end of it, wow. Look at that big thick cable loom, that's just ridiculous. Wow, just, you know, no thought given to the uh, systems engineer of how it's all interconnected and stuff like that. Bugger it, we need to get 50 bloody wires from here to here, this huge cable loom. Wow, but yeah, they're trying to jam as much, you know, 1970s or look by the looks of it, uh, functionality into a given volume like this, and the density's incredible. Wow, look at this thing, will you? Look at all these blocks. They're just completely potted blocks, so each one of those would be custom made. That'd be an individual, you know, military part number. 
for each module and they've just wired the damn things in and like just whacked them on a board and really haven't done much interconnection with the board at all. And there's some, look, these are the board to board interconnects. Wow, it's just unbelievable. You can actually see how they've actually soldered those onto the top of these uh, like, you know, like pin header interconnects. It's just unbelievable. Wow. One of my first, in fact, part of my first job when I was uh, 17 was uh, uh, troubleshooting and repairing military uh, power supplies and things like that. Very similar to uh, stuff like this. It was all horribly conformally uh, coded, although they didn't, it wasn't as dense as this. They didn't have really end-on end on, uh, components like this that uh, give you a higher density. So everything was conformally coded. So just to get in there and test it, you'd have to scrape, like, you, you know, to troubleshoot the thing, you'd have to scrape away the conformal coding off the pin before you could probe it. And, oh, repairing it was just, ah, oh, it was a nightmare. Jeez, those were the days. It looks like, do we have a stud diode there? So, but what the hell is this thing? Like, is it some relay or something? And it's just everything is hand-wired. I mean, yeah, we've got some, you know, yeah, the PCB is doing some things, but, oh, wow. And there's the back of the board. So, yeah, there's some interconnect going on, but woohoo! That's potted. Imagine, like... The amount of effort that goes into building this thing, it's incredible. No wonder military stuff costs, you know, yeah, why a hammer costs like $200. And there it is, fully apart. <laughs> what, if anyone has any clue what this thing actually did, multi-coder channels, speed, some sort of, you know, multi-channel motion thingy. I don't know if anyone's got any clue from International Data Systems in Dallas, Texas. Let us know. Leave it in the comments. Wow. Thanks, Godfrey. And postcard time. This one comes from Canada from Steve. That's the correct tongue angle. There you go. Beautiful. And this one's from Tez. And we have a lovely church from the old Dart. Beauty. And another one from Canada. This is Banff. And yes, I've actually been to Banff, and yes, it is that gorgeous. Oh -ho. And we have a postal hack. If we receive this, and we did from Luca, he hacked the system. Check out the price of the postage stamp. Beauty got through the system from Capri. Fantastic. Hi to all my Italian viewers. And Frankfurt in Germany. I think that one's been a little bit colorized, but... Sure, it's nice. The Penn Railway Station, fantastic. This one's from Dustin in Texas. One from Jenny from Finland. Hi to all my Finnish viewers. Fantastic, look at that. What's that white stuff? I don't get it. And we've got ones from Andre in Thailand. Don't get many from Thailand. Hi to all my Thailandese viewers. No, Thailandy viewers. I don't know what you call them, sorry. From his second house in Thailand. Awesome. Thanks, Andre. I do enjoy getting postcards, so I don't always show them. Sorry about that, but uh, and sorry for those who hate it, but, well, who cares? You know, I'm going to show them occasionally, so let's have a look. Oh, sorry. This one is from nobody. It's from the USA. We've got some polar bears, and, uh, yep, doesn't say. What is it? It's just, oh, we've got some dosh, some funny money, some of this green stuff. Not much smelling that at all. I said in one of my old videos, American money like this it smells like a combination, or somebody described it. No, it wasn't me. I just repeated it. Somebody described it as smelling something between feet and ass. Some combination of like, <laughs> I got 20 bucks. It's a donation. Thank you very much. To uh, United States Naval Ships uh, Charles Drew. Thank you very much. Uh, United States Navy. Seaman, I guess. Something like that. Charles, good on you. He's a ship's electronic technician. And I don't quite get the note because it mentions like a Fluke, an old Fluke 87, uh, sorry, Fluke 77 Series 4 and how he's got issues with it. It's intermittent and um, would I not dissect this unit? Hang on, let me check. Could have missed it. No, 
No, Fluke 77. Hmm. And that's from Alan Horowitz. Um, sorry, Alan, it's, uh, yeah, the U U United States, USNS, United States Naval Ship, I'm assu assuming, the Charles Drew. I wonder what uh, class that is. What class of ship that is. Oh, I have to go Google it. And I've got a really old one. I won't tell you the date, but uh, sorry, it's from, ooh. Gregors Domangala from Oysterick. I'm, I have no idea where that is. I have no idea whatsoever. And what is it? It looks like maybe it's just a postcard sent in a letter. Because that's what it looks like. And yes, it is. The Star Popper Weir. Greetings from Vienna. There you go. Another postcard. Some old made into tunnel diodes. Do I have some tunnel diodes? I do have some tunnel diodes. Beauty. And there's the tunnel diode for you tunnel diode aficionados. I know you're out there. Come on, come out of the closet. Beauty. We've got one from France. Hi to all my French viewers. This could be like a last name first thing. I think it's Pierre uh, Charlier. I don't think it's Charlier Pierre, um, as what it says there. So. Um, yep, we've got a note. Should I just read the note? But that kind of sort of ruins it, doesn't it? I'll have a look. I'll have a peep myself. And I'll tell you what it is. Bottle and... It's in French. I have no idea what it is. I can try. Let's just open it, shall we? Yeah, this is one of these ones that's all wrapped up, so I've got no idea where the sides are. Might just... Get in there like this, perhaps. There we go. Ah, right, okay. There we go. We are into a box. Hope it wasn't fragile. Here we go. What have we got? Scan the badge here. Push here. Oh, neat. Let's open it up. Check it out. It's the key Duino. And scan the badge here. We've got an NFC. Um, tag and presumably I'm not allowed to open it unless I scan it and then push the button. What is that? Disarm it? Hope an alarm doesn't go off or something. Scan the badge here. Yep. Oh, do I have to keep it there and push? Oh, yes, it opened. I think that I just heard a solenoid. Oh. Oh. Hang on. Right, so I can't open that. Oh, there we go. We're in like Flynn. Jeez, that wouldn't have looked dodgy to the uh, x-ray people, would it? The airport? <laughs> nah, not at all. Aha, uh -huh, looks like it's going to be a Kickstarter starting from the 17th of November for one month, I think. We're on time. It's the 23rd of November. Um, it, uh, what does it do? You can read and write NFC tags, peer-to-peer -peer comms with a smartphone and show you this board. It's just a, a thing he just set up just for me to show it off. Excellent. And it looks like he's got a video on YouTube about making it as well. Excellent. Thank you very much, Pierre. And yes, I had it right. It is Pierre first, even though the, um, it was came second on the thing. And here it is. Let's try it again, shall we? It's... Here we go. So let's... There's our... Uh, there's our spot for the NFC tag. Or oh, did the hots not come off? Anyway, there we go. Hey, the solenoid goes around. And if I don't have the tag there, hang on. Yeah, see, if I don't have the tag there, then it doesn't open. It sounds like it's opening, but it doesn't. Well, if I whack it, I could whack it on top. There we go. Beauty. It works. What a Bobby Dazzler. So there you go, that is the key Duino board, and I just checked the Kickstarter, Pierre's almost reached his uh, 10,000 euro goal to get this thing uh, made, so check it out if you need a um, NFC, uh, you know, you can use it for anything, uh, really, this is just, you know, an example app where you could uh, lock something uh, uh, with NFC key fobs, but it's built into the Arduino board, fantastic, no external antenna crap, just whack it straight on the thing that, that you want to protect. Nice. So if you want to check out the Kickstarter, I'll link it in down below. Thank you very much, Pierre. And it's designed in France. Oh, why can't it be made in France as well? That'd be neat.